Welcome back to Daybreak Extra, coming to you live from our studio um, in the nation's capital. So the dilemma of working women during Ramadan will be the topic that uh, we'll be discussing today with our first guest. And the demand for domestic help and cooks has gone up with the advent of Ramadan, with most you know, working women finding it hard to manage household chores, including cooking, of course. Uh, many working women were of the view that, you know, one rarely finds an understanding husband who is willing to help, where, you know, his wife in the kitchen. And uh, this often leads to arguments at home during Ramadan. Joining us via Zoom to discuss the dilemma of working women during Ramadan, Dr. Aisha Aminu Senchi. She is a humanitarian and development expert, a PhD holder, and she is also a working class woman. Good morning, Dr. Aisha um, Aminu Senchi. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. So um, let's start with, you know, the topic, of course, at hand. You've heard that we'll be talking about the dilemma of working women, and especially during Ramadan. So what's your take on uh, the topic today? Okay, as a background, uh, you know, Ramadan is the ninth month of uh, the lunar Islamic calendar, which is also an uh, obligatory uh, for all Muslims, including the women. It was uh, in, in the last 10 days of Ramadan that the Holy Book, the Quran, was revealed. And uh, in that same uh, last 10 days, uh, all uh, affairs of the creation are decreed and uh, it is expected to manifest in the coming year. So uh, realizing the purpose of Ramadan, which is to attain a consciousness of God, it is also very, very important uh, to every Muslim uh, woman regardless of whether she's working or she is not working in the world. So, and as a working class woman, uh, our duties doubles up during the month of Ramadan. Ramadan uh, will be an addition to the already existing work and family uh, related conflict, especially when we know that it is obligatory, therefore, for us to achieve that balance between the Ramadan uh, uh, and uh, the family and as well as the work, which, uh, you know, we have an additional uh, responsibilities, uh, uh, like you mentioned, talking about um, the additional menus during iftar and also uh, talking about um, uh, additional, uh, it's a holy month that uh, entails a lot of uh, time for prayers, uh, for for uh, intense memorization of the Holy Quran uh, so that uh, uh, you uh, move closer and you are that consciousness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, as a, a working class woman, uh, it is not easy, we all know, uh, because um, now there is an additional task uh, uh, in addition to the already existing conflicting uh, situation that we women are facing. Uh, but uh, we try to relate them strongly with efficient time management and um, also to uh, realistic plans. And above all, uh, we need support as women at all levels from our husbands, families, and also our colleagues in the office. Uh, when we know that the holy month comes with high activities, like I mentioned earlier, shuttling between personal commitments like prayers, preparation for iftar, and also uh, the need for us to accomplish uh, our routine professional uh, work in the office. So um, basically, um, we have also uh, like... Um, to look at what are the mitigating factors, what are those things we're supposed to do so that uh, we balance between this. And um, one of the things uh, I, 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 I do, or I also advocate, uh, I talk to my fellow women is about uh, uh, how uh, the organization colleague 
myself and family members uh, will help in uh, really actualizing and uh, helping us to balance up like things that has to do with setting daily goals. Uh, what do you have to do in the office? What is that required of you at home? What is that required of you for Ramadan itself? Because it's also come with a line of activities. So, and then you schedule, your schedule should also be flexible and you prioritize your task. So, and uh, you also always uh, engage in problem solving because uh, sometimes uh, it comes with a lot of, you know, somebody, your husband from morning till evening and you start asking for a long menu today, I want pepper soup, I want jollof rice, I want swallow, you know, and then uh, it's not very easy, you go to the office, you come back very, very late. So you, you like have to make him understand that it's not about the long queue. There's so many dishes, uh, but it's about the healthy and nutritious food that he requires during the month of Ramadan. You need, uh, we need uh, the understanding of the man of the, hus uh, the husbands. Sometimes uh, it may entail uh, uh, reminding them of their also parts uh, religiously, uh, like the Quran and the uh, Holy Bible, all ask them to support us to be uh, the pillar for our support that they should be. So during Ramadan, uh, we expect that our husbands understand our situation and uh, with the increased task and also uh, be supportive. Uh, we are not really saying we know in the Northern culture, it is not expected for a man uh, to be with you in the kitchen uh, to start cooking. People look at it as a taboo or something else for them. Uh, there are so many ways they can support us uh, and then uh, we will be able to uh, balance up. Uh, for example, uh, uh, by even reducing the number of those menus and allowing us to like uh, do what we are able to do. Some men will not even allow you to take a house help. Uh, I know a situation whereby uh, if a house help cooks for my husband, he will say he's not eating that food that day or I will cook rice, he will stay a swallow that he wants to eat. So you really need to make them very, very understanding. You will have to be humble to them, no argument, you don't procrastinate, so that because the more you argue, the more they feel you value the work more than what you are supposed to do at home. And on one hand, uh, remember Ramadan is um, uh, like an oblig not like it's a really an obligation for all Muslim women, and um, we believe it is during the Ramadan that all the gates of the heaven are opened and all the gates of the hell are closed. So we also want to be nice to do what is required of us so that we attain uh, that a last blessing, and also uh, we, we 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 are uh, rewarded by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So uh, Ramadan is seen as a protective shield against fire from the hell, uh, of the hell. And so women also strive just like the men uh, to do the prayers, uh, as well as we have our indicators in our offices, which will be measured and regardless of the time. So uh, another thing is um, a collaboration with your uh, and teamwork among your, your, your colleagues. Uh, and also um, trying to uh, work together very, very closely so that they support you. The support is not just at home, also in the working place. Uh, I had um, a situation that I have a meeting and I know usually in the afternoon uh, I will not be able to stand for a very long time. What I do is to see that I engage my colleagues to support me uh, whenever I feel I, I, I may not be able to. And uh, they have been very, very uh, supportive. Uh, taking responsibility of the situation is also another key issue that women should focus and also reducing any to reduce uh, other potential conflicts. So uh, avoiding being emotional because sometimes you are, you, you know, you, you, Ramadan is about restricting yourself from eating, drinking uh, till from morning till seven. Uh, and so uh, when you are hungry, sometimes you can be emotional and uh, coupled with uh, the demand in your office. So you just have to be yourself and uh, control yourself. 
don't be emotional and um, also keeping it simple. Uh, for example, in the preparation of meals I mentioned earlier, for example, when it has to do with um, uh, your schedules in the office, you try uh, as much as possible to keep it uh, uh, simple. You schedule and uh, integrate uh, uh, how you work closely with your friends. And finally, uh, you, you try to make it possible uh, I always uh, say that, yes, I can. And uh, this, I always tell my fellow women that say you can. Never believe there is something that is too much for us. If we can uh, conceive and uh, uh, nurse a baby in our wombs for nine months and uh, go through all the rigors of labor, then there is nothing that is as painful, which there is nothing that is as painful as that. Then we should also be able to balance between whatever situation uh, we found ourselves. And uh, this I uh, will say uh, thanks to a uh, privilege I got to learn from uh, one of the organizations I worked, uh, which uh, this slogan is always making it possible. So it is not easy for a working woman, but yes, we can. And we are doing it uh, uh, efficiently and uh, we are delivering and will continue to do it. of the questions uh, that I had. Uh, but, you know, uh, when you talk about organizations, uh, I, I remember you actually said that uh, the organization you work, it, you work with try to make it easy for, you know, Muslim women to be able to, you know, uh, fast so it doesn't affect them. But there are other organizations who are so strict that, you know, it doesn't even bother them and you have to do the work. You know, you have, uh, you have to work from eight or sometimes even 9 to 5 p.m. And even at that, you have to withstand traffic before you even get to the house. You know, you go home and you have to cook the meal. And then you have just a few hours to even sleep before you wake up for Sahur and all that. And some people would actually say something would suffer. If either the work suffers or your fasting suffers, what would you advise women to do in such situations? Women who actually have really, really tasking and you know a strict work environment yeah i think maybe you did not get me very well what i'm saying is it lies in us we the women you know you have to integrate very well with your colleagues the organization where i work i report by eight i close by five but then what i'm trying to say is uh, by the time you have a strategic plan you engage very very well with your colleagues to support you because it's not everyone uh, in your organization that is fasting. We still have our Christian brothers and sisters whom are not fasting. So there are some of your key deliverables that are expected of you that when you uh, uh, collaborate very, very well, uh, you can have that support. After all, it's just for a month. So you can have that support from you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Dr. Aisha, you, um, I remember um, Sheikh Mufti Mek mentioned, you know, in a video of his uh, that in the month of Ramadan, women are supposed to, you know, not only cook, but of course, use that um, time period to worship Allah, which is the main essence of Ramadan. And you'd see situations yeah. whereby the men would be doing, you know, mostly little to none. And the women, of course, by the time they're done with work from office to get back home, put in the work, you know, for iftar. And then when it reached time for the main ibadah, they are exhausted, you know, and it all boils down to them, you know, burning out. So you mentioned that uh, men should support their women, you know, help them and all that. But I would want you to give, please, more detail or, you know, insight on how this men or family members, others can actually accede to the woman in order for her to also have her own closeness and time with Allah. Okay. Oh, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, this, the, the, that, key, that word support uh, it, uh, comes from the two holy books. On one, in the Quran, it is clearly stated that men should be supportive of their husband, uh, of their wives, 
And even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did mention that men should actually support, support us just like he supports his family in their dealings. And um, uh, a lot of imams uh, do tell them that uh, they should realize that even the holy prophet at some point wash dishes for his uh, uh, wives and also uh, support them uh, with a little, little house. Uh, so in the area that we request support with um, our men has to do, you know, we have uh, some of our men, you know, it's not just even the cooking. You do the cooking, you finish the cooking, you, 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 you bring the cooking, they will even be expecting you, uh, Aisha, please bring spoon. After I drop the spoon, <laughs> the next will be Aisha, bring cup, Aisha, bring. So if they can help with that part, it will be very, 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 very good. Uh, we, we will appreciate. And also supporting with the kids. Uh, sometimes uh, we have little kids that needs our attention. And we come back uh, uh, late and we are saddled with the responsibility of trying to cook and the children needs our attention. So we also expect the men to look at that aspect and support us uh, with the area of uh, uh, the, 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 the children where they also need um, uh, our attention. Sometimes even going to the market, you know, some men will decide to leave that aspect to the wives. You know, you, you are coming back from the office, you have to park uh, your car by the side to start buying this and that for iftar, and you come back, you rush to the kitchen. Such an uh, aspect also should be seen, driven or implemented by men. All the, the things that are required now, we are, we are in the digital world. We communicate with them, they support us to, and try and see that those things we will require for the day uh, is uh, ready so that when we come, in fact, uh, uh, not just that, you know, there are uh, occasions we have to make like um, uh, some dishes that like a fruit salad, blah, blah, like that. While maybe a wife is busy uh, in the kitchen uh, cooking, I think some of those things that has to do with peelings and whatever, after all, uh, what did our religion say? It's not whatever Allah is not saying, do not do it. I don't think uh, it says it is not haram. For a man to say he will not support his wife in, the, in this kind of uh, minor minor things and again come talking about ibadah that you mentioned yeah immediately after you break your fast it is expected you pray your maghrib then you also go to the mocks uh, uh if um which is very close to pray the isha and uh, the tarawi prayer which is about uh 14 raka as so uh most women uh do not have time to go for that which is very very key so I think at this, uh, uh, also, you have to find a way like, like uh, sell it to the husband to ensure that uh, uh, this is obligatory. Uh, and uh, if I will be able to uh, manage all the things that I'm doing, and uh, since I also want to benefit from this holy month, I should be allowed to uh, do that. And definitely from time to time, get on out to the the, the work sometimes uh, I remember the very first or second day of Ramadan. I had a, a, a talk there in the office. I closed late. I went. I went straight to the kitchen, leaving my bags and everything in the car. Immediately after the Maghrib uh, prayer, I took water. I slept off. I did not wake up to till eleven p.m. And then I still have to uh, like. Um, I rush to the kitchen to see what to prepare for suhoor. And uh, I have another meeting uh, in the office the next day, uh, which I'm supposed to plan. So, but then, like I say, uh, I always believe in making it possible. Uh, there and then I jump up, I prayed my isha, and then I did my duties, what and what my uh, plans for tomorrow will look like, even what I'm going to cook tomorrow for if iftar, uh, what will I require get from outside what is in the house and then i communicated some of these things with my husband that tomorrow we will be having a meeting and i may not come back to this place uh around four if you can get us this this and that uh, i would appreciate so that when i come back uh it will be um uh, uh, easier for, for for me so these are some of uh, the things. And then sometimes even that prayer, by the time they go to mosque and allow only you at home, it becomes very difficult because of uh, you are already um, so tired. So sometimes I, I try and um, ensure that I go with him 
uh, leaving every other thing. Then we go and pray together and uh, I, I come back then before I attend to other domestic issues at home. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aisha, for your time. And of course, for explaining how working class women can actually, you know, merge the home life and of course the office work during Ramadan. May Allah make it easy for every woman out there. Amen. Thank you. Okay, this, uh, you know, you're with us, of course, on Daybreak Extra, and um, we had the opportunity to talk about how Ramadan has been, you know, for working women. And the main essence of it is, you know, for people to, uh, their family, to help them not to get burnt out, you know, from the hustle of all and everything going on in their life, in their life, you know, at this moment. And with that, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, the show continues.